Namaste. Today's posture is peacock. And you can expect this video to be slightly longer than the other ones because peacock is one of the most difficult postures to understand as there are so many different technical details into it. So I'll try my best to break things down the way it works for you. Please choose the right option. Do not think that the posture has to be gotten in to its perfect shape on day one. It is just like other poses. The more we repeat, the more we develop the muscle memory and it starts coming into the body. Let me first show you how a peacock looks like. So an ideal peacock, you want to keep the whole body parallel to the horizontal level. But this again is achieved by consistent practice and knowing what steps are to be broken down for your own practice and where exactly are the difficulties you're facing. Now for a peacock, the first part I would like to start talking about would be where should I position my elbows? So ideally you want the elbows to be, this is an ideal perfect world. If that's your hip bone and that's your pubic bone, dissect this and the elbows reaches down there. Hip bone, pubic bone, dissect the line and the elbows reaches down there. Now presume that there might be many of us who structurally cannot really get the elbows that deep. If you have got shorter upper arm length or a very longer torso, that's when bringing the elbows down to that point would become challenging. And in that case, think about, can I have my elbows as low as possible? Just as low as possible. For many of us, it might be at the level of the navel, which is perfectly fine. However, students with this kind of uh, difficulties or challenges, if their elbows aren't reaching too low, a straight leg version gets difficult for them because then they have to start plunging the body so much more forward they tend to lose this angle of hold that's when a butterfly or a lotus version is a lot more effective now imagine that you want to balance a stick on this block where is the perfect place of balance it's at the center so when you're positioning the elbows at a certain point, your length of the upper body is from here to here. Your length of the lower body from the elbows down to the feet is almost double, if not perfectly double. That means the legs are a lot more further away when you're going into a straight leg version from this pivot point. And that means your upper body is over here and the legs are over here and the legs tends to drop down because that's your pivot point, longer legs. That's when technically we need to think about opening this angle of the elbow. The more this angle opens beyond a 90 degree, the more we start shifting forward. So that would look something like this. Let me begin with the butterfly so that it's more prominent to observe the change of the elbow angle. I go into the pose and from here my elbows are more or less 90 degree and as I want to extend my leg my leg drops down because it's heavy so then what I need to do is to start moving my torso forward so watch my elbows angle versus it is this before so you saw that I have to change my elbows angle from a 90 to almost around 120, which requires a lot of muscle power, shoulders, triceps, core, scapular stability, all these things. So these all requires quite a lot of training. Now coming back to the basics of how to start with the posture, its myths and how we can correct the forms if you have been doing it in a different way. Ideally try to keep your palms away from each other around four to six inches. So from here to here. 
Keeping it too close makes you wobbly on the side. So around this width would be good. And your palms are turned backward. Uh, I do see a lot of us also practice with the palms out on the side, which is not really incorrect, but there are two challenges you would receive if you're getting into the final form. One is to lift the chest and second is the pressure which the wrist feels. This position of the hand is easy to begin with, but to get into that perfect horizontal shape would be pretty challenging. So try to have the palm rotating back. Now, the next part is, how far shall my knees be? I personally like to start from an all fours position. Then I turn my palm in. I check that width in between the palm. I round the back because as I round the back, my elbows point could be lower. If I keep my back straight, I now bring my elbows and this is only until my rib cage. Where else when I round the back, that's when I can get my elbows really down towards that intersecting line or close as possible to that. So rounding the back is a key. However, when you're going into the final form one day, your back will get straight. But this is just a starting point where you want to begin rounding your back. So from all fours position, you round the back in. It's important that it stays rounded. The posterior tilt over here is important because if it goes up again, there is nothing your elbows can rest on. You're not creating that nice curvature in order to have the belly softly sinking onto the elbow. Now this is my posterior tilt. I go anterior and my elbows tends to go out. So keeping that tilt of the pelvis downward or which is called posterior tilt is important when you're doing this pose. Coming in, I round the back, I lower down the elbows, I shift forward and I start here. Instead of starting with my knees next to my palm, because then I do not have enough shifting space. My weight is in one straight plane and I do not have that space of moving forward or moving back. So it would look like this. And even when I want to do that posterior tilt, I tend to lower too much. Now my elbows are barely touching to my belly. So that is when you would need to put your head down and then readjust the legs, which is not worth wasting energy. So always think about beginning to have a space. The starting should be you're able to amply move forward and comfortably move forward. So that's about positioning of the elbows and positioning of the palm how close the elbows should be. Three inches, six inches. There is no specific point or benchmark like that. Keep your elbows as close as possible. They would never come as close that they can touch, so you don't have to worry. But the elbows being closer would be the key. If there's one common problem which I see in almost every student, it is that when they set their elbows in and the body goes down to rest on top of the elbow, the elbow tends to slide. This is again muscular engagement of hugging the elbows in while we are going forward and down. While we are going forward and down. So try and keep the elbows hugging in at all the time. And if you still have that tendency of having the elbow splitting out, Beginning point with a strap is fine. You don't want to rely on the strap all your life, but the starting point to get the feeling of the posture, a strap is good. So take a strap and make a loop. I already made a loop for myself. The loop should be comfortable enough for you to have the elbows positioned around slightly closer than your shoulder. You don't want to keep it as wide as the shoulder because then it would mean eventually the elbows are here. But in ideal peacock, you want the elbows to be more inward so your belly can rest on top of the elbows. So I insert in the strap and then I enter into the pose. Rest of the things remains the same. I round in, I get the elbows down and now my body is comfortably resting on my elbows and then I tend to lift one leg in a butterfly followed by the other one. Do not worry about the parallel line now. It's a lot more stable. Again, as I mentioned, over time, try and work to get the elbow strap off. 
because that is more of an organic energy you want to build up through your body's muscle engagement. So let's go back in. Palms in, rounded back, rolling, posterior tilt always stays on. As I go down, I squeeze my elbows as close as possible to each other. Then I lift one leg up, butterfly, second leg up. At least be comfortable to hold this point for 10 to 15 seconds. I would say minimum is a 10, 15 would be better for you to feel the shift of the body. The next stage, as I mentioned at the earlier part of this tutorial, as the leg starts going back, shift the body forward. So if you're good with 10, 15 seconds in this spot, next step would be this. I go in a straddle. I extend my legs sideways. Straddling keeps the center of gravity more close towards the point of contact. Bringing the legs together is harder. It pulls the body weight further back. So the last step would be to try and get the feet together, which would be this. Straddle and feet together. You can still see that my body is not entirely parallel. So I would usually train my students to go into a butterfly, 10 to 15 seconds solid, followed by a straddle, 10 minimum solid, followed by bringing the feet together, 10 solid, and then to try asking them to lift their chest up. And when I, I try training them to get their chest up, I usually place a block in front of them. I ask them to focus that this is the floor and you're not going down below the blocks line. So again, if your feet together version with low chest is for 10 seconds, this would be the final method of approaching. So that's how you get into different steps from one, two, three, four, and eventually get into a parallel line of a peacock. For women, usually this can be quite painful around the breast region. So always try bringing the arms from outside and then in. Not from the top of the chest, but from outside going in. All right, so one more time from the top, breaking it down really quick. Palms four to six inches wide. Elbows pivot point as low as you can. Palms turning in around all fours distance. Not too close, not too far. As you start going down, round the back, maintain the posterior tilt. Let the shoulder go back as you round, shift forward squeeze the elbows as close as possible allow the belly to rest allow the belly to press and rest into the elbows then start lifting one leg followed by the other one and hold this for 15. so that would be the breakdown of how we do a peacock if you have got questions or comments please mention down in the section of the comment again this is technically not a very simple posture to approach any one of those points are not being met it will become harder or challenging do let me know what is your difficulty in a peacock pose and I will make sure to reply you back thank you for joining this tutorial namaste